Here we are at the King Edward Hotel in Toronto, Ontario for the Clean Tech and Technology Metals Summit. Our guest is Christopher Reed. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here. Well, thanks for coming up. Um, Neo Metals has had a fascinating year. You have your fingers into a lot of different metal pies, but right now you're focusing on lithium. Yeah, we are. We're, uh, we're producing lithium from the Mount Marion lithium mine. We've got a, a small interest in that. It's the world's second largest source of lithium feedstocks. Uh, we're now concentrating uh, our efforts towards downstreaming our share of production in a couple of years' time. Uh, we've developed some lithium titanate anodes, which is a, another step down. And then um, we've developed some lithium battery recycling technology, essentially urban mining the lithium batteries at the end of life. All right, so let's talk about Mount Marion. What stage of production is it at? So Mount Marion's had three shipments away. Uh, the fourth shipment leaves this month. Um, so the ramp up's going very well. Uh, it will produce uh, at full capacity about 400,000 tonnes of concentrates containing about 50,000 tonnes of lithium carbonate equivalent. And do you own the entire project, part of it, joint venture? Uh, yeah, so we've, we've sold down parts. We've bought in two big partners. So we have uh, Ganfeng Lithium uh, as a large equity partner and off-taker uh, and Mineral Resources, who are a leading Australian uh, project developer. So you're getting revenue from that. And then in the middle, you have your own research and development team that's looking at other applications. Correct. Actually, a lot of it's done in Canada. We have uh, an R&D lab in Montreal. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's uh, and initially we came to Montreal as part of the titanium project because Quebec has uh, very large resources of, uh, of hard rock titanium. Right. Uh, but yeah, we've, uh, we have a, a small facility down in Buffalo, New Jersey, where we do the lithium electrolysis. Uh, and that's a technology that we're hoping to commercialize to produce lithium hydroxide from our lithium feedstocks. And you mentioned your titanium. You get some vanadium out of that as well, don't you? Correct. It's, it's like the ones that you have at, uh, at QIT. Uh, so it is uh, predominantly iron, titanium and vanadium. So we're looking at recovering uh, a titanium hydroxide uh, as an intermediate product, but we will recover uh, high purity vanadium pentoxide uh, and iron oxide. Now, before we started with the cameras on, you and I were discussing uh, the recycling of, of lithium ion batteries. Right. And I'd always heard it was not possible to economically recover the cobalt oxides from the cathode in a lithium ion battery. You tell me I'm wrong. Um, well, look, you know, the test work and the scoping study that we've had done by leading Australian engineers, Sedgman, uh, would say differently. I mean, we've committed now uh, to build a pilot plant uh, at our facility in Montreal. We'll run 100 kilos a day of uh, NMC format batteries through that. Mm -hmm. Certainly the metallurgy to separate the nickel and the cobalt uh, when they're reasonably equal parts is, is, is challenging. But uh, you know, if you took a, a laptop battery, it's about 20% by weight cobalt, which is about five or six ounce gold equivalent. Right. So there's, there's, there's room to be wrong. Um, certainly the costs we projected to be less than $5 a pound, which is pretty good in the current pricing environment. Well, last time I looked, cobalt was 55, 54,000 US dollars a ton which is about $24 a pound. Correct, so there is some, some margin for it. Yeah, you have some margin there. And can you recover other metals as well out of the lithium ion recovery? Yeah, the, the lithium uh, it has traditionally been tricky. The lithium is 3% of the value of the battery. The cobalt's right. obviously significant. Uh, as you move from the consumer ba electric batteries, which are, uh, in laptops and phones are pretty much cobaltate, uh, you move towards the more NCMs, NCAs, then you do have to recover um, the copper, the aluminium, because those foils are in the battery, um, manganese. Uh, so yeah, there are other valuable products. And, and certainly uh, one of the tricks has been to try to get it out of its native format into solution. Right. Because uh, if you find, if you get some lithium polymer there and, and crack that with a hammer mill, uh, exposed lithium metal, um, things go bang. <laughs> yeah, it's combustible. I've got one or two broken hammer mills as, as testament to that. So what can we expect this year? So this year we'll run the pilot plant for the battery recycling. And that's the one in Montreal? In Montreal. We'll have an engineering study finished by Christmas on a 10 ton a day commercial plant. Uh, and then we are running a partner selection process. So 
the batteries, you, you can't move them a long way, so it's more of a decentralised sort of model. Okay. Um, you could put a small 10 tonne a day next to... Sorry, is that because the cost of shipping them makes the cost too prohibitive? Not really the cost. I think there's a safety aspect. Um, I mean, I think we've recently seen, you know, the, there was a lithium batteries down in Texas, I think. There, were, yeah. there was a train ignited yeah. and look... So I think you don't want to travel long distances, like you wouldn't send them into continental. Um, so, you know, the, our, our approach with the 10 tonne a day is you would put that at the plant where you made the batteries because in the process, there's spoils and off-spec product from the cathode, the cells, the packs um, of 10 or 15% of what you put in. So 10 tonnes a day is a good size for the larger battery plant. So that would otherwise be waste that you're recovering? You, you would have to put that through a complete different cycle, yeah. And so that that's a bit of a segue for these guys to get their heads around the chemistry for a larger plant. The end of life, they will need much larger, I mean 10 tonnes a day is not going to cut it when you have to take all your battery packs back. Right. But right now you're in an enviable position. You have the treasury that allows you to do this kind of research. Correct. We, are, we, uh, we have got about 70 million Australian dollars in, in cash uh, and investments. And uh, I'm imagining you have a budget for the year. At the end of the year, you'll have cash in the bank left. Sure. Plenty of cash. It's very, very hard to spend that amount. So we're looking at a well-funded R&D company that's in revenue. Correct. Yeah. I mean, it, we're, we've got captive sources of all the commodities that we want to be in. Um, we've got processes that can enable us to, to operate down the bottom end of the cash, cur cash curve. And, that, and that's the only defendable position you can, you can take in the long run. You know, it takes the risk out of the pricing cycle. Well, thanks for educating me. I learned a lot today. I look forward to learning more from you over the next couple of days. Thanks for the interview. Bye. Cheers.